Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, please subscribe because it motivates me to create videos more often. And if you're not new here, thank you for sticking around. Today's video is very exciting for me as an artist because I'm going to redraw my first ever digital painting and therefore I'm gonna be able to see my improvement from the past three years and also talk a little bit about what I've learned during this time. So three years ago in April 2019 I finally started to paint digitally. It was the year I found a bunch of amazing digital artists on Pinterest and Instagram and it really inspired me to try it out myself. I was used to drawing traditionally before that, um, like I enjoyed sketching and using watercolors and I think I was pretty good at it, but unfortunately that didn't translate well when I switched to digital art. For example, I had a pretty decent understanding of anatomy back then as well, but somehow the lines had a different flow digitally and it was very hard to get used to it at first. Also my first tablet was a screenless tablet that my mom got me for Christmas, which made everything even harder to shift. For example, here you can see that I knew the details of the ear, but the lines look so weird and out of place because I didn't have the right eye-hand coordination the tablet demanded. Okay, so let's get started with the main stuff I've learned in these three years and what I'm doing differently today. First things first, when you're starting a new painting, the composition is quite important. So for example, in my first painting, you can see how oddly I placed the character. She's not fully in the middle, nor fully to the side, she's just in between. <laughs> because I didn't know how layers worked, for example. I didn't even think about moving her around, and basically I treated everything like it was on paper, unchangeable. Now I'm trying to be pretty mindful of the composition from the start, and I noticed lately that I rarely leave the background empty and if I do, it's never a solid color. There has to be at least a little gradient of some sort and that can really, really boost up your paintings. It doesn't have to be anything super detailed or vibrant. Sometimes just doing some lines or blurry shapes is enough to draw even more attention to your character. Another thing I quickly noticed in the first painting is the lack of references. So I was really excited to try out my new tablet and I didn't even consider looking for references, which is why I have so many anatomy mistakes. <laughs> because I basically tried to draw from memory and it obviously did not go well. <laughs> now it's pretty much the other way around. Um, I'm saving a bunch of references that help me with the anatomy as well as inspire me to paint something I wouldn't think of otherwise. So I highly, highly recommend to have some patience and look for some references whenever you feel uncertain of your painting. Over time you will develop some muscle memory and you won't need specific references for every single thing you need to draw. So it's worth it. Another super drastic improvement I see is in the way I'm using colors. I can vividly remember the aesthetic I was going for in my first painting. Um, I wanted something super soft and flowy. Uh, I had pastel colors in mind and she would be wearing a nice lacy top that would further accentuate the softness of the painting. Um, needless to say, I unfortunately did not have the skills to express what I had in mind. The only thing I did was to choose light, friendly colors, or so I thought, <laughs> like pink and light blue without playing around with the hues and saturation at all. I'm pretty sure if I did that, it would have looked a lot different color-wise, but as I said before, I just treated everything like there's no going back. <laughs> And honestly, given the fact I painted everything on one layer, there was pretty much no going back at some point. The shading is actually not as bad as I remember. 
I think the videos I watched beforehand kinda helped me choose decent shading colors because it's not that muddy. Like it could have been way worse, I think. Now is it still bad? Yeah, definitely. I think the black line art threw me off completely right from the start, which is interesting because I can see that I changed the color of the hair line art, but not the skin. Now why is that? I don't know. Um, but I do change the color of my sketch now. I try to leave it as much as I can in the final painting, so it's really important to fit nicely color-wise. I think that changing the color of your sketch is a must because it really makes a huge difference. Like you can have an amazing color palette but if the sketch doesn't fit or complement the other colors at all, it won't be as cohesive as it could be. I am much more confident with colors now for sure. You guys already know I like to enhance my paintings with a bit of a gradient instead of sticking to a solid color and I feel like I'm experimenting a lot lately with different shading techniques and I'm often trying to figure out how to enhance the portraits stepping out of my comfort zone. So for example, here I went into the shadows directly with a very saturated purple and it kinda overwhelmed me in the beginning because I usually add accent colors at the very end where I feel like it. But now this is what felt right and I think I figured it out by the end. So yeah, it would only make sense to keep everything nice and bright in order to achieve that soft aesthetic I was going for. So there's no strong contrast or saturation like in the first painting, just muted colors that complement each other nicely. I know a lot of you struggle with color theory and I do too, which is why whenever I'm in doubt I kinda rely on either complementary colors because they work really good together or colors that are close to each other on the color wheel, like in today's painting. Also, another thing I do sometimes is desaturate the colors as much as I can because any color works with any color if they're desaturated enough, like pastels. A huge improvement in any digital artist's journey, I think, is figuring out how adjustment layers work. So for a long time, I had this idea in my mind that I could do everything I imagined only by using normal layers and just playing around with the colors and stuff like that until I get to the desired result, right? But that's just not the case. Adjustment layers play a huge role in digital art and honestly, they're the main reason I would choose digital art over traditional art any day of the week. Like not even the fact you can undo a hundred times is not as good as adjustment layers for me. The problem was that after discovering them, I would go too hard. Like everything I painted was exaggerated and packed to the max with different adjustment layers. So that's just something to keep in mind. Maybe lower the opacity of that add layer, maybe play around with the before and after and make sure you didn't overdo it. In today's painting, I used three adjustment layers and those are add and screen for the ray of sunshine on her cheek. And also I used multiply on the left side of her face to add some subtle purple gradient. The next one is pretty big and it's something I still struggle with but I've definitely improved upon in the past years. So sometimes I have this urge to zoom in too much on a detail I'm working on and I know this is a common thing and I know how you can feel insecure if you're not zooming in enough to carefully work on that detail but hear me out when I say no one will ever zoom in on your work that much. Literally no one. It's something only you will notice because most people will focus on the overall shape and aesthetic of your work and not that little dot in the eye you worked on for 30 minutes straight. I think I wouldn't make such a big deal out of it if it wouldn't massively slow me down. Like yeah sure, I made a little sparkle in the right eye and only I know about it, whatever. But when it takes you 2 extra hours on multiple details that no one will notice, well, that becomes an inconvenience in my opinion. That's why I'm very happy Procreate has this reference window now because it really helps not zoom in as much. Like you can see very quickly if what you're doing, like what you're working on, will actually be visible when you look at the painting zoomed out. One of the things I'm heavily focusing on during this time is trying to decrease the number of hours it takes me to finish a painting. 
I really don't like the fact it takes me 6 to 8 hours for something like this because even if sometimes I don't mind working for hours with something playing in the background, other times I really really wish I could do something that would take me 2 hours tops and it's good to go. Especially when I work on commissions and I don't have anything to post on Instagram for a week or when I have to record my process and stuff like that, like it really becomes a bit nerve-wracking to have the setup recording me for 8 hours straight. So if zooming in less often will help me achieve that, I will definitely pay more attention to that habit. Okay, the last one is a piece of advice that would have helped me quite a lot had I known sooner about it. But as always, later is better than never, so I'll take it. I'm sure you already know the drill with flipping your canvas once in a while to check if everything you did so far looks alright. But another thing that helps with more than just a composition check is letting your painting sit for a while. Especially if you're a slow artist like myself and spend hours on a painting, your eyes will get used to the whole thing after a while and you won't be able to notice the mistakes anymore. And not just mistakes, but maybe the colors don't look okay, maybe they're too strong or too soft, maybe you wanna tweak them a little bit more, maybe your character doesn't fit right on your canvas and you wanna adjust that, stuff like that. Just whenever you feel like taking a break in the middle of a painting or at the very end, it's good to rest your eyes, take the image out of your brain and check it out after an hour or so and see if you still like everything about it. This is really useful to keep in mind whenever you're very excited about a recently finished painting and you want to post it immediately, just give it some time and return to it later. 9 times out of 10, I do some minimal changes that might not matter to everyone else but they sure matter to me. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm sure I could talk more about the stuff that I've learned throughout the years because I went through a lot of style changes, technique changes during this time, but these were the things that I thought of when seeing my first ever digital painting. Um, I'm not always aware that I'm improving and sometimes I improve really slowly and it's really easy to overlook these small achievements that together actually shape your overall skills. That's why redrawing my first work meant a lot to me. As someone who constantly compares themselves with other insanely skilled artists, it's really easy to get discouraged or feel like my art is not improving at all or like I'm standing still while everyone else I admire has mad skills all the time. I also used to delete all my paintings every month because I thought they were terrible <laughs> and I didn't want anyone to see how bad my past artworks are. But this way I got the opportunity to compare with no other than myself but 3 years ago. I can proudly say there's been a lot of improvement, a lot of changes and this experience definitely gave me a confidence boost. I hope that you'll do something like this once in a while because it's a nice way to remind ourselves that we are in fact improving. I think I'll be doing this redraw every year from now on and see how things change. And I'm pretty sure next year I'll be looking back at today's painting and think, huh, that was really bad. <laughs> but that's fine, every painting, good or bad, is mine and it's helping me get closer to my goals. A lot of you guys said some really nice things about my progress on Instagram and how you found it really motivating so I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for that. It's really really sweet reading such nice comments. But yeah, that was it for this video. I really hope what I said was helpful and if it was, please leave a like so I know you enjoyed watching my video. It really helps me out and if there's some other topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below because I do read all of them. My next video is going to be about shading hair, I think. It's been sitting on my list for a while now and I think it's time for a hair tutorial. But other than that, I really hope that I'll find some more time to make videos because I really enjoy the process. But sadly, I can't afford making them a priority right now. But hopefully in the future that will be possible. But anyways, subscribe if you like to see more videos like these and I'll see you next time. Bye!